Yeah, well done, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Okay, ready when you are, Chair. I think. I think uh, I think we're ready to go at seven o'clock. Uh, uh, unless anyone's going to quickly object, I'm going to invite Joe to go live. Uh, yeah, the recording oh, has started. Uh, He's done. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If, if if Joe's not done so, then please start us off. We are live. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Thetford Town Council Planning Committee for Tuesday, the 9th of February 2021. And we have uh, quite a full agenda in terms of numbers, at least. So let's get going on 775, which is our usual declarations of any disclosable pecuniary interest. Are there any, please, now remembering that you can always, if you remember, uh, if you want to come in later, you're welcome to do so for a specific item. Any any declarations now, please? And there aren't, so let's move on to 776. Apologies for absence. Have we got any apologies, please? Yes, I've got one from Councillor James. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, uh, thanks for that. And now 777, which is the minutes of the meeting held on the 12th of January. Um, take you through those. They're on your screen now, I hope. Yep, can I just check? Can everyone see the first page of the minutes? Yes. Yes, I can see. Yep. OK, so uh, anyone not happy with the first page? If we, we're scrolling through, would you like to come in if you something you want to change if you see at any point? Because when we get to the end, we'll assume that you're happy with everything. Yep, that's the end. OK. Um, final chance, folks. I'm going to assume now that you're happy with that. So uh, now we are confirming the minutes of the committee held on the 12th of January as being uh, an accurate record. I'll just point out, which I should have done earlier, that they have already gone through uh, full council. So there shouldn't be a problem there. Thank and you. can I also take the opportunity of thanking Stuart, who chaired that meeting. OK, so we're ready to move on to the next item on our agenda, uh, which is 778. And this is the meat of the meeting, the planning applications we have to consider. Um, I think, Mark, I'm largely going to rely on you to introduce each of the items. So if you'd like to kick off with A, that would be great. Yeah, thank you, Chair. So application 0004, uh, Riverside Walk, obviously a, a very well known site in the centre of town. Um, vacant retail premises at the moment. Um, hopefully you've all had a chance to look at this. Um, the proposal is for um, that large unit. To be I'm getting some little bit of feedback there, but hopefully you can still hear me. Uh, this uh, large existing unit to be split up into uh, a number of much smaller uh, units. There are a couple of options uh, given for whether to have some frames around the windows on the shop fronts or to go for a more all glass look. Um, but basically uh, to split up that, that large unit into uh, a series of small units uh, on the ground floor. The first floor um, to be mothballed for the moment, um, pending sort of further plans. Um, but basically um, you can see all the different elevations there. Um, here are the floor plans as well, so that's what it is existing. And again, just a slight, uh, slight difference when seen from this angle. Um, so excuse me. Um, these are proposed for class E use, which is basically pretty much anything apart from hot food. Um, there'll be resource to the parking area, level access to all scores, uh, to all, uh, all levels, as I said, even though they're not actually um, using the top one at the moment, uh, lighting to the rear area. So they're basically saying that um, they've, they've sort of looked at the, the retail options for the site and, and they don't think they can find one client. So they'd much rather have um, a selection of smaller units, um, as I said, which will um, look a bit like that. Um, back to you, Chair. 
Thank you very much, Mark. Members, any any comments on that proposal, please? Bearing in mind that they're offering us two slightly different alternatives and we are looking at a currently vacant premise. As you know, it's been vacant for some time uh, and they're proposing to split up to a number of smaller units. Uh, I guess it's fair to say that we can't guarantee that the kind of fronts they're proposing on the ground floor will be what the um, eventual tenants might like. If you're a solicitor, you may not want a, a, a full glass window. So there may be some compromises to be had later on. And I think we're also accepting that uh, we're not necessarily going to have eight retail premises, which is a, a mixed blessing. Um, but comments now, please, from members of the, the uh, committee. Sorry, I didn't take my microphone off. I've got two hands up, one from Councillor Jeremy, one from Councillor Wright in that order. Can we take you in that order, please? So Terry first. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mike. Um, I had a good look at these plans online, uh, actually, because I was quite excited by them. Um, and I think this is exactly what we need in Fetford. We've been, um, we know there's a demand for smaller units, uh, particularly in the town centres. So I think this is really encouraging and I think we should strongly support it. Um, I don't have a particular preference between the two options, um, but what I would say is, um, uh, aside from the image that's on the screen, I was really encouraged by the proposal to resurface the car park um, at the back and improve the lighting. Um, that's the car park opposite what's the Thomas Paine statue effectively. Um, and that's been a sort of bugbear for years, the rubbish and everything else in there. Uh, so I think it's really commendable that this company are prepared to uh, not only do up the buildings, but also the surrounding amenities. So I think we should um, you know, be strongly supporting them. And, uh, you know, I think it's really good news. Uh, there was a second hand about, uh, was it Stuart? I'm not sure if I got that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yep. Th thank you, Mike. Um, yep. I yep. think, you know, echoing um, Terry's sentiments, really, it's uh, it's nice to see them wanting to invest in the town. I think what they're working with is a, is a dated building. It's very, you know, flat roofs. And I'd love to see a, a picture of Khan there, but obviously this is uh, them trying to make it uh, serviceable and uh, fit for purpose for the current day and age we're in. Obviously what they're doing is trying to keep their options open for the upstairs, which potentially you could see being converted to residential, I suspect. But uh, as Terry said, the, the car park at the back is, is in sore need of uh, <laughs> refurbishment and hopefully it will be respected a little more if, if the money does get put into that. Um, I'm you know, not too worried about the, the images that we've got there. It doesn't do much for me, either of them architecturally. Uh, the loss of the canopies over the frontage is, is something that I know we probably need to modernise, um, but if you're in the rain, it, it does, it does some, have somewhere to shelter at the moment, uh, which we will lose as part of this. But uh, uh, I think you know, we have to accept that uh, they're trying to move forward and uh, whatever the brave new world post-COVID is going to be uh, to keep their options open. So I think we need to support the, the idea of the investment coming in. Thank you. Hands up, Chair, from Councillor Cannon. Uh, Brenda, if you'd like to speak next, please. Um, yeah, I didn't raise my hand. I just put agreed in chat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brenda. That's pretty <laughs> concise. <laughs> um, any, any, more, any more hands up? Any more requests to speak, please? I mean, I, I, maybe that everyone else simply agrees with that. Two, two, two very strong and supportive comments from Terry and Stuart, and it may be that we are satisfied to ask uh, Mark to uh, concoct a form of words that gives, that appears to give. We are obviously a supporter, and uh, if if everyone agrees with those two, if we're a supporter and strongly so, and we recognise uh, that. Um, it, this is good progress at the front and certainly good progress with the car park and that we have to, I think, recognise, I'm adding something slightly, that this is not for, for the uh, uh, account really, but we, we perhaps need to recognise they're going to come back and say, yes, the upstairs will be flats or yes, we need to change the frontage again. Uh, I, I think we just take it as a big step in the right direction, don't we? Uh, anyone anyone wish to speak, can I put it this way, does anyone wish to speak against what uh, Terry and Stuart have said? 
Okay, I think we're, we're, we're there with that one, Mark. If you can yep. write something up strongly, strongly in support of these encouraging proposals. Yeah, we'll do. And no, no particular preference over the two options. I, I, no one's yeah. expressed any, no, so no. I think you're right. Uh, again, I personally, I'd give them the, the, the give them the choice. They, it needs, it depends a bit who they get as tenants. There's often some discussion between the landlord and the tenants as to what the frontage is. If they have the right to choose, that may help a bit in getting extra okay. tenants. In. Uh, are we ready to move on to triple uh, zero eight? I think zero 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 eight would be nice. Yeah. OK, so this is just a, for your information, basically, because uh, it's not a, uh, a consultation. Uh, it's merely a sort of one of those legal uh, sort of uh, um, uh, questions that Breckland have got their answer themselves. Uh, basically, a new MOT bay with an existing um, you know, motor repair shop on the industrial estate. Um, so uh, just to note, basically, folks, and um, if you're happy with that, I will move on. Anyone want to comment? I think we'll move on then, please. Um, okay. So again, uh, for your information only, so not this isn't the consultation. It actually has been now already approved as being within uh, the householders' permitted development rights. So uh, this is Wood Rough Road and the, and the small extension you can see there. So again, um, as I said, as they're not asking for comments on that, I will move on. If you are happy to do so, Chair. Yep, please do. OK, so one you are allowed to say something about. Um, number 40, the Terrier pub. Um, so Norfolk Terrier is, uh, is, again, a very familiar site. So I'll just draw your attention to this smoking shelter building here, which is on the side. So at the moment, uh, the entrance is in here. And what they're proposing to do is, is put a uh, fencing around here. So you will actually come into a new mm -hmm. entrance around there. Can people see the cursor moving, by the way? I just, I, I think you usually can, but um, if you can't see where the cursor is. Um, with the little yes, you can. I think. Yeah, I think you can. I think yes. that's just worth yeah. So that'll be, as I said, you'll have come around here and in through this way. So again, just note this kind of um, uh, gazebo thing here, because the, the proposal is for this whole area to have a pergola over it. Um, which we'll see in a minute. So there's the existing layout, as I said, with the main entrance there. Um, and, and that's where that gazebo is. And then what's proposed, as I say, you'll come around there into there. This will be this will be fenced off. There'll also be new fencing here and a new picket fence here. And as I say, a basically a new pergola all over that area of the garden. Uh, and there's also be opening out this, which is existing a dining area, uh, as it's, oh, sorry, there'll be a, a new bit in the middle of that dining area. So that will become basically the main body of, of the pub. So no real change to, to it, but just uh, that new feature in the middle. So as I said, there's the way in, uh, there's the pergola, which just goes on the side. So it will be in a uh, wooden slaps and plants growing over it and then at the top of here as I said new fence new fence at the top and new picket fence in that area uh, so that's what the pergola looks like uh, from the side and above and yep yeah, there we go comments invited chair I think um, thumbs up Councillor Hollis chair uh, uh, I'm happy to let you come in here Jen if you'd like to comment on that please thank you Mr Chairman um I've Fully, I fully support this because, sadly, the the building has been left. Uh, it's in a bit of a mess around it now. Yep. Um, I noticed um, the other day that they've started putting new picket fencing round the outside, and it can only be a good move because where the smoking area is, it's it is a mess. So to have it actually incorporated in the in the grounds as such uh, can only be a, a better thing. Yeah, I support it. Thank you very much. I think that's very positive. Um, I'm kind of feeling that may well cover the issue. Is there anyone else wishes to speak about? We we we're going. Yes, someone's. Yes, Councillor Harvey agrees. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, uh, we we we're getting some support for what. Uh, uh, Jack, Jack, 
Um, can I just check with any anyone wish to go against what, what we're looking for here is is a agreement that we are a, a positive supporter of this proposal. A great deal of tidying up in a much needed on a much needed site. Councillor Barreto agrees. Thank you. Stuart Wright agrees. Thank you. I agree. Thank you. Thank That's. That's Catherine Burnett. I recognise that voice. That's Colin, isn't it? Yeah, it is indeed. Was, was that Colin? Yes. It was. Um, yeah. Uh, hello, Dennis. Uh, just to say hello, Colin. I don't think we've uh, <laughs> exchanged words this evening. Good to have you on side. Uh, and did I hear Dennis's name mentioned? Dennis. Yeah. I... You're in favour, Dennis? Okay. Yes. Uh, right, I think just 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 Mark, it, it, it's I'm sure they'll put th this through. So let's just call ourselves a supporter and not waste too much breath on giving any much any great detail. We've all we've, those who've spoken or those who've indicated are all saying we're we're in favour. Yeah. Okay. Uh, problem. So uh, 64 then uh, Brandon Road. Uh, so we're looking at sort of a fairly substantial house here, almost opposite the Church of the Holy Sepulchre at the end of School Plain there. So this, the extension's marked on there. Uh, so it's replacing an existing extension with a new and somewhat more sub uh, substantial one, um, but not basically a huge difference. Um, basically, so you've got a sort of garage and and door there but this is now becoming sort of more part of the house i suppose it's fair to say um this is uh the south and so again very sort of minor details in terms of what you would actually see if you're looking at it um so if you look at this here there's a sort of covered area and workshop and uh gym and storage in there um, so this would be basically an extra bedroom on their ensuite bedroom um, onto the existing thing. So a more substantial sort of extension at the back where that sort of thinner um, covered area uh, was there. Um, there we go, Chef. Thank you very much. Uh, any comments on this uh, would site would be welcome. Uh, Councillor Jeremy supporting. Yeah, uh, it's um, mm -hmm. it's well mm -hmm. hidden from the road, isn't it? So uh, the great the supporting. <laughs> more support from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Respect. <laughs> Just going to check with you, colleagues. Is there anyone anyone who is unhappy about any aspect of this proposal? No. I don't think there is. Um, again, Mark, I think this is pretty straightforward. We're basically yep. saying yes, carry on. So we're, okay. we're, we're a supporter. Mm. Right. Thank you, um, Chair. Thanks, everybody. Uh, okay. So we're replying on to 0089. Yeah, so um, this is basically one that's been uh, passed this committee already uh, and the, the town council was in support of it. And it's a very slight change in uh, location, so slight that on if you're looking at a previous, ver the older version of your um, uh, presentation pack, you'll notice I didn't notice the difference between the two of them and I put them in the same place. But it has moved, it has actually moved slightly. So this is where it was on the previous proposal and it's now going sort of there up against the boundary of the site but basically everything else is is the same about it so as i say it basically was there is now going there um so as i said they're literally asking you to comment on the change basically rather than uh, sort of going through the whole uh, issue of the mast again uh so yeah basically change slightly it's the is the sewage works along the a11 and a slight as i said very slight change of location <laughs> Uh, can I just ask a, a slightly more loaded question? Any anyone against this proposal, please? It's it's a it's a limited change in what we already agreed to. No objections, Mr. Chairman. Thanks very much. No objection. Thanks again. If that was Colin. Okay, colleagues. Uh, I think we're saying we support this minor change. Uh, so let's 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 take that as agreed and move on to zero zero nine zero.
Yeah. Yep. So another bit of uh, water infrastructure. So basically, they uh, the water treatment road works, which is um, on Barnum Cross Common, basically, or between the Common and uh, Nunnery Drive. Uh, they're looking to put in a couple of features: an emergency dosing kiosk and a um, shower unit. Uh, it's basically going to be right in the middle of an in existing um, sort of industrial site, water treatment works, as I say. So you're looking at the two units there. As I said, surrounded by the existing features and um, sort of screened by hedging all around it anyway. Uh, so, yeah, basically there there is the, the sort, of, sort of small dosing kiosk and uh, shower unit. That's all for that, I guess, Chair. Yeah, again, I think, Collins, I'm going to invite you to say if you uh, feel that this is uh, mistaken or you want to oppose it, uh, now's your chance. Otherwise, I'm going to suggest that we support. As long as there's, as long as there's no direct impact, Mr Chairman, support. Yeah, I, um, I can't see any any uh, problem with it. I, I suppose I'm the nearest since I live on Nunnery Drive. Um, it, I, I don't think it's going to impinge on anybody significantly. I doubt very much if anyone walking past would be conscious of any change, whatever, even if you knew what was there in the first place. Actually, it's all fairly hidden, isn't it? If you walk past the what is the red line on that map, you hardly see inside to the uh, you see a large gate usually. Um, I'm not hearing anyone against it, so I'm going to I'm going to suggest uh, uh, that we are a supporter, and I'm about to move on unless you want to come with a last minute suggestion. Okay, so we're saying we're a supporter of the uh, dosing kiosk and emergency shower, and we're going to move on to 1417, please, Mark. Okay, so just to note a slight change to one of the drawings in um, uh, an application that you've already agreed and has now been approved by Brecton. So basically one of the drawings was slightly inaccurate and as in they didn't uh, show a secondary drive through sign between the KFC and the Costa signs. Uh, so as I said, as that is already approved and has been agreed by this committee, um, I would propose to move on to the next item if you're ready, Chair. Uh, I don't think there's any problem with that uh, unless anyone again wants to jump in. Uh, silence is golden. Thank you very much. So we're agreeing with that. Thank you, Mark. Yes. So let's move on. Um, and again, another one actually where um, sort of no further comments required because this has now been approved. Hopefully everyone did get the chance to see this and uh, there were no sort of uh, objections. Um, it was just slight, uh, well, I say slight changes. I mean, fairly significant changes if you look at the two um, um, plans, basically. Uh, it, is, it is slight, it is somewhat different, but um, the Autumn Close um, uh, extension basically has, has been uh, as I said, approved, uh, but it's just a note that it was slightly different to when you saw it at the last meeting, I guess. So uh, again, if you're happy, we'll move on. Yep. Uh, any any comments required, colleagues? I think the answer is we're happy with that then, please, Mark. So that's uh, support again as far as it goes. And so we're going to move on, colleagues, now to uh, uh, perhaps an interesting item, can I say, 779 which is late planning applications received after the agenda was published. And it's back to you, Mark, to introduce anything you've got. Yeah, well, quite a few. As I, as I said, hopefully everyone has had the chance to see. So, oh, close. Uh, now, uh, there, is a, there is a slight caveat to this, is it, as in today I received from Breckland no, uh, a notice that there had been a slight change to the plans or the footprints of the plans of this. Um, but the documents, when I looked, uh, weren't actually up on the website. I did ring and ask if, uh, see if I can get through to someone to, to find out what exactly has changed um, since this. The plans, as you can see them here, um, were published. Um, they obviously don't think it's substantial enough to to, uh, to have a new application. We've only got the two weeks sort of consultation period. Um, what I'm going to suggest is we probably have to make a judgment based on what we've already got. And I will, as soon as I do actually get um, details of what has changed since this, um, I will let you know and we'll sort of give you a chance to uh, comment on, on that. Um, but I, I think it's probably fair to suggest that this is the changes are not going to be substantial enough to to probably make you have a different opinion on it. 
Uh, having said all that, uh, so you're basically looking at oak close. We're looking at little extra room, <coughs> excuse me, on the back here, uh, which is, uh, as I say, basically an ensuite bedroom there. So you can see the ground floor plan. Um, looking at the rear elevations uh, there, we're basically looking at that, and that's what you would see from the side. Um, so there you go, oak close. Uh, as I said, with a caveat, it might be slightly different to what you're looking at in the final analysis. Any comments, colleagues, on that one? Perhaps it's fairly straightforward. Hands up from Councillor Wright. Um, Stuart, Stuart, would you like to part, speak, please? Yeah, I've got no overall objection to it. It's just something that in the past we have um, made comment about on flat roofs. Um, we've really tried to err uh, uh, against flat roof extensions. Uh, and it looks as though there is scope to get a pitched roof up to the window sill of the upper built bend there, which you know, causes less problems in the longer term. And I think it's a bit more character than having these flat roof extensions that we have seen over the years. Uh, thank you for that. I think we need to find a form of words expressing that. We probably still need to. Um, Maybe guessing. that is the change. You never know. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, any more comments, please, about yep, that? Councillor Jeremy. Uh, Terry, please. Yeah, I mean, I know what Stuart says, and I think perhaps uh, at this point we should um, express a preference uh, for a pitch, but I don't think it's a deal breaker. Um, the rear of that property isn't um, very uh, prominent. There's a sort of large um, sort of green area and trees. And I don't think it would be visible uh, at all from the from the garden there, um, uh, leading up to the industrial estate at the back of the property there. Um, so it's not a deal breaker for me. It's not an overly visible site, maybe to do the cost. But it, you know, to ensure we're consistent, we could perhaps mention our preference would be a pitch. But as I say, I don't think we should object to it uh, solely for that reason. I've got a brief from Councillor Harvey. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I think between the two, Councillor Beretta. Okay, between the two speakers, we've probably got a, a good compromise there. Uh, so we're, what we're going to say is that we are a supporter, but that we would prefer, we would recommend the consideration of a of a pitched roof. I think Carla wants to speak, Mike. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, Carla. I misunderstood. Carla, would you like to, have to speak, please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's not. Not imperative that I speak. I was just going to ask comment that uh, I, I would support this as, as much as the other councillors. Just make the point that quite often people do make extensions because they have a growing family or, or such, and quite often younger families or grandchildren come along or whatever it is they can't afford uh, to go out and rent or or buy on their own. And so many families are doing that nowadays, and I, I support that because it's the way of position can accommodate growing families. So that's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I um, mean, it's short term, isn't it? In a way, you know, I, I have quite a large pitched roof and a small area of flat roof. The small area of flat roof gives me more trouble than the entire pitched roof put together. That's just you have to accept that if you if you put it that you will eventually have to spend money repairing it. Uh, was that another comment request? I wasn't sure. No, no, it wasn't. OK. So I think we're saying uh, really along the lines of what um, uh, Council Jeremy said, which is that uh, uh, we would um, uh, have welcomed a pitch roof, but that's that's a, a, a principle that we'd like to see encouraged. However, we support this proposal. Uh, okay. Just give a pause again in case colleagues would like to give a last minute view on that. Otherwise, I'm going to say that's what we're saying and let's move on. Okay. Okay. So, Nicholas House. Um, so, part of the the back, uh, the new part of the building to uh, be demolished, and basically, um, councillors may well remember um, sort of the proposals which have been um, approved for uh, two sort of large dwellings to the rear of the existing building. Uh, the proposal now. Uh, Apparently, after a uh, meeting with um, Andrew Gayton, the historic um, uh, the How historic buildings advisor for Breckland uh, and the district council, uh, they have apparently 
sort of uh, following on from that meeting, decided that they would now prefer to go for six uh, units on extension at the back. So this would be, I think, uh, four bed sits and two flats, if I remember rightly. Um, so six smaller uh, sort of dwelling units. Um, so the existing building, I'm sure everyone's very familiar with that. Uh, and the proposal is uh, the bit that's uh, coloured in for you there. Uh, so, uh, so as I said, the three storey uh, extension or uh, additional building on the back of the existing one, uh, coloured in yellow for you there. So first uh, or ground and first floors rather. And the uh, attic, if you like, the second floor over there. Um, so basically, um, yeah, as I said there, it's they've still got this valid plan commission for the uh, sort of the two larger dwellings, but their their preference now is to go for oh, sorry three bed sits and three one bedroom flats uh, to replace the bit at the back. Uh, Twenty parking spaces, uh, as is the current situation. Uh, back to you, chair. Thank you very much. And I don't hear much about car parking, but with that, with that comment, can I open it to colleagues to discuss, please? Um, hands up from Stuart Wright, Councillor Wright. Stuart, would you like to come in? Yeah, I just think um, part. I think when we last discussed it, parking was quite um, uh, an issue that required uh, a bit there, and I think with the less dwellings it, we seem to accept it but we knew there would be a possible problem um if we're going to get more dwellings more likely to have more cars i suspect um with it um i suspect we would make the same comment as before regarding parking mark if we got that yeah thank you i think that's that's uh, that sounds like good advice for the rest of us any more comments please Uh, while you digest, digest the car parking issue, I think we just need to be clear that we come down on the side of, on the side of supporting it, basically. Is that correct, please? Well, you're a very well-behaved class, folks, but I'm happy to take suggestions and comments if <laughs> I would like to. I reckon we've, we've, we've muted everybody. There's nothing on the chat here. Yeah, I think we, 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 do, we do need to have some kind of decision over what to uh, submit. <laughs> uh, OK, let's be right. Think that support or not, at least. OK, the decision is, folks, that we owe support mm -hmm. three. Yeah, I agree. I think that's. Uh, I think we kind of resigned to this, uh, Mark, and I'm probably not a lot of enthusiasm, but uh, there is. A comment from Councillor Hodgkinson support, flat roof being replaced. Uh, Doki. What was that bit about roof, um, Chris? Um, uh, Councillor Hodgkinson support, he said, but flat roof being replaced. Oh, support the the fact that the flat roof is being replaced. That's, oh, that's right. a fair no, point, Chris. I think there's two, it's, it's support stop. Yeah, right. Flat roof being replaced, exclamation mark, I think. Yep. <laughs> oh, right, yes, about following on from the last one, of course. Yeah, thanks for that, Chris Harvey. That makes good sense. Can I support that support? Yeah. Okie dokie. And then right. support from, a, you know, from another four people. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I think we're now clearly there with a big majority, if not if not unanimous, it may well be unanimous. So we're going to say, uh, Mark uh, Webster, that at this time we are now a supporter and uh, let's get on with this solving this site. OK, so just simply support uh, you, you didn't wish to make any sort of comment about parking or. I'm not sure if it'll take much. It would be a slightly, I suppose, difficult to phrase thing. You say you, if you say you, you find the parking inadequate but support it, um, it would be, I suppose, I mean, not impossible, but. Uh, Conflict between terms. I mean, we, we could say we could. You could say you regret the, the lack of increased well, that's, that's a nice word. Well, that's a nice word. Our, our, our colleagues happy to say, but we regret the absence of extra parking. Yes. 
Let, let's do that. Let's do that, folks. Let, let's say that we support her, but we regret the absence of extra parking. Uh, I think that's about the limit of our power on that issue. Okay. Right. Uh, if that is decided, I'll uh, I'll move things onward. Yes, please. One last chance to have a look at it as we go through, and we go on to Abbeygate. So um, there's the sort of the main road along the road. Uh, that's where the Abbeygate branches off, um, and this is the one in question. And you can actually just see a sort of little box on the side there. Uh, so it's it's a sort of it's not a porch, but it is quite a small extension. Um, it's basically, um, as you can see, a little extra box on the side there into which uh, it is proposed to fit a sort of utility room with um, extra WC there. So, yeah, there we go, Abigate. Wrong with that. Any any comments on the Abigate proposal? Number 13, Abigate, please. Councillor Burnett's in favour. Very good. Right. Is that a uh, decision then, Chair? Are we are we in support? Um, I'm hearing I'm hearing the buzzing sound that usually tells us someone's put something on chat. Presumably. Support, uh, support. Support. That's the phrase I wanted, Chris Crimmon. Thank you very Honest much. Hodgkinson and Barretto. Right. OK, uh, we're, we're, we're there, colleagues. We're saying we support it. That, that's, I think that's really all we need to say. It's not wonderful. It's, um, it's, it's realistic, and I suspect it's not the first one on that side of Abbeygate. So let's say we're a supporter, and let's move on, please, Mark. Right, so um, this is Caxton Way, uh, the vacant sort of... Um, site uh, in between existing industrial units. Um, it's currently sort of a mixture of uh, woodland and rough grassland. Um, this is uh, this proposal, uh, we've already sort of agreed outline planning permission at a previous meeting for uh, sort of development on the site. Uh, you may remember that originally quite a large number of trees were to be removed. Um, they have reduced that. Um, the town council also commented on uh, previous applications about um, uh, trying to uh, protect hazard, hazard uh, protect habitats rather uh, for uh, lizards on the site and um, there are proposals uh, to retain a bit of the grassland which is quite species rich in places but um, this uh, application isn't really about that um, this is basically mainly uh, almost purely about the look of the building so it's we're talking about uh, you can see an artist's impression there the the materials and uh, some sort of color scheme uh, of the building. Um, so as I said, here is here is the site. That's the entrance of Caxton Way. Uh, and so that is the, the development area in question. Uh, it's a slightly more colourful version of the site plan than, than some of you may have seen. Uh, but basically it's a, you know, obviously a huge uh, square industrial unit. And again, as I said, you've seen the the artist impressions here's it here are the elevations and what it looked like um and um yep there we go that's the uh warehouse unit of paxton way thank you very much uh colleagues this is where a lot of thetfordians earn their bread and butter uh we we generally tended to say uh whatever goes we do try and protect a little bit the uh foliage when it exists uh, but basically, I'm going to suggest to you that we should support this. Are there any comments, please? I've got two hands up, first of all, from Councillor Jeremy, then Councillor Wright. Uh, Terry, would you like to go next, please? Uh, yes, please. A uh, couple of points. Um, firstly, um, I don't have a huge uh, preference about colour scheme and design. It's an industrial estate and it's tucked sufficiently back into the industrial estate. It, it's functional rather than aesthetic. Um, what I would say is that area and particularly the pedestrian routes leading to that area, um, uh, there's quite a few sort of walkways and stuff. There's a significant issue with uh, rubbish 
uh, sort of people dropping uh, rubbish on the way to shift work and that sort of thing in that area. And um, I think we should mention as part of our comment that we would welcome um, uh, proposals from them to uh, install rubbish bins, particularly in their area. I couldn't see any on their plan. And when I looked on the website, there will be staff facilities there. We want to make sure that they've built them in. Um, and if they were so minded to put them in the sort of walkways leading to the site, I think that's important. Um, the other thing is about um, uh, signage around um, directing lorries. Um, the County Council's put up some signage at the end of Caxton Way to advise lorries as they come out of Caxton Way not to turn left and go down London Road to the chase traffic lights, but to turn right and go straight back to the dual carriageway. Um, if they could be encouraged to put some additional signage uh, closer on their site to advise people as soon as they leave that facility that they obey that same traffic movement. We want to stop HGBs going into the town as much as we possibly can. Um, and the only other point, and I, I haven't looked, but um, uh, that's um, uh, Mackenzie Road at the, the top there, um, it, or Main Street, uh, I think it's Mackenzie Road in the very top and then Main Street towards the left. Um, I'm just a little bit concerned about noise because they're building right up to the, uh, the boundary um, and uh, I'm sure Breckland's noise people will have a view on this. Um, there is an existing tree belt, but um, uh, you know they, they are pretty close to the houses there. So I just wanted to throw that into the mix as well. But generally, I don't have a strong uh, angst about it. Uh, I think it's a good thing to see the investment in the town, but th there are some sort of mitigations that they should build in, and we should comment on the application to that effect. Thank you very much, Terry. That's very helpful. I think if I was to stop the discussion now, I would be saying we would support it, but here are three points to be made as forcefully as we can, Mark. But uh, Stuart Wright, you wanted to comment, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> I'm very much supportive of investment into the town. It's uh, <clears throat> classified as a industrial site. Uh, as Terry said, design-wise, we can't really ask for, for much more. But I would like to say, um, in, in relation to the boundary, uh, the red boundary markers there. Um, I suspect it's going to be the, the palisade fencing, you know, very robust and what have you. But it would be nice if that could be softened by painting green. Um, so the view from St John's Way looking up um, is softened a bit, blends in with the trees a bit more. And the rear of the warehouse itself, obviously, we have got an image of the front there, but I don't think we've got an image of the back. And again, if we could have that dulled down rather than a bright white or bright grey uh, i think that would be uh, aesthetically more pleasing for those in st john's way looking to the back of the unit um you don't really want a harsh white uh, carbuncle uh, at the top of the road and you, know, you can soften it in some way that would be really useful um noise i accept what terry's saying um uh, but at least the warehouse now is um against the boundary whereas the old lorries used to come down that, that area um <coughs> nearer the, the st john's way end uh, the other thing is I don't see any bike spaces um, earmarked. Um, I think we just make sure that we sufficient bike spaces are done because we need I to. can answer that, um, uh, Jerry, if you don't mind me. I think there are 60, if memory serves, no, can... about 60 covered bike spaces, yeah. They do mention in their um, uh, limb environmental statement about uh, the bike path which does come in oops sorry gone too far um here as being one of the sort of ways that this sort of will encourage people to access the site um yeah i can check that but i think yeah there was um it was i'm just going to have a quick look actually because we're on, just to confirm that but there was there, there is definitely mention of um in the design and access statement uh, quite a significant amount of bike parking. So, um, yeah, we have to, I think, give them credit for that. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Stuart. I think that's two more good suggestions. Hands up uh, from Councillor Barreto. Uh, Carla, it's your turn now, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, now I was just going to follow up on what Councillor Wright said um, regarding the bike uh, spaces, and I know that you are now going through it. Uh, and this is something I was going to raise, and actually should have raised it even on the previous item on the agenda, 
um, actually, because we were arguing with the point that uh, as, as there's more dwellings are being built, there's less parking available. And actually, might be a, a good point for us to encourage the, the, the people and the, and, and the owners of the, of the buildings or the constructors to actually include um, as part of the amenities a, a little bike area. And I suppose, in, you know, encouraging people to use bikes by instead of using cars, but particularly if they live in the center of town, um, it is not only more practical, um, it, it saves on space, but actually it's more environmentally friendly, which is something that we ought to look for too. Thank you. Yeah, I hope, I don't know whether you can actually see the screen there, but um, I'll just, the parking, uh, 107 parking spaces, nine accessible, five motorbike, six covered cycle parking spaces, and five uncovered park cycle parking spaces. Thank you. I'm going to suggest, colleagues, that we we work on this one by saying that we are a supporter in principle, but but there are, I think, at least five suggestions that have been made by Terry and Stuart, and we want to make sure that the comment repeated um, and ex extended by Carla is is um, is important. That they are responsible for. They should be. They should take responsibility for ensuring that there are are sufficient spaces for cycles in particular. Perhaps we can argue motorcycles as well. Um, uh, I think we're probably ready to go on that one, unless there's any more comments, please, from councillors. And there are not. Right. Uh, can I just clarify, Chair, that? what those five things are? Because I've got insta I welcome installation of litter bins on the walking routes approaching the site. We welcome signage for lorries um, indicating they should avoid the town centre by turning right out of Caxton Way. Um, noise concerns. Um, um, I'm not, I'm not sure what you, you actually want to say about that. It, it, you express concern that the, the noise levels um given the development is, is is that close to the fence um painting the fence green as particularly on the uh side facing st john's way and duller colors for the rear elevation of the building itself was that the five things and the sixth being um uh, it's just sort of, uh, uh, again not quite clear what you want to say me what you want to say about parking uh, cycle parking yeah i think we just have to because there is some we just need to put an anodyne comment such as uh, they should ensure there is sufficient cycle parking uh, with cycle space well, 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 there are i mean there are 60 that's that's quite yeah, that's, that's right I mean, so we're not we're not really think that's uh, sufficient or, or not, or not. We're not asking to put more we're simply we're simply making a point to britain as much as anything um so we've got litter, sign, noise, the colouring and the cycles. Um, regarding the noise, I think we're encouraging Breckland to look at uh, okay. a concern. There's nothing much we can do, I don't think, about that. It is pretty close to residential area. And perhaps we just point Breckland to, we just point that out to Breckland that it's next door to our residential area and uh, we would want assurances that noise levels would be acceptable. Uh, yeah. Yeah, good. No, I like that. I can, I can, gives me something to work with there. Super. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Yep. So, uh, any more late, please, Mark? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, right. Where are we? <laughs> oh, just gone a bit too far there. So, yeah, uh, Magdalen Street. Uh, so, we're looking at the buildings actually behind uh, the sort of street houses. So, we're looking there. It's just behind a shop, um, as you'll see. So, this is the building in question, that being the street there. Uh, so, here is um, the elevations, excuse me, and this is the proposal basically for the floor plan. So, if we look at the dark grey area that's existing, so uh, as I said, that's towards, as you, as you can see, the shop there. This is the additional bit on the side there. Um, so, yeah, as I say, I'll just go back so you can see. Uh, it's just a basically small sort of side um, extension on that building, which is circled in yellow or in red on that plan. Any comments, please, ladies and gentlemen? Great. It's uh, it's inevitably again. It's not really visible very much from the from well, not visible at all from the road because it's behind what effectively is a terrace. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
that's generally an issue that we therefore tend to be lax upon. We say, OK, whatever goes, goes. Well, there's one support from uh, Councillor Hodgkinson, another support from, um, um, in fact, Carla or Colin. And support from Councillor as well. I will support you. Thank you. Yes. I don't um, know what uh, Colin Burnett is. <laughs> uh, thank you for that comment. I forgot, I'd failed to notice we've got two CBs. I live with yes. one. So <laughs> I'm, used, I'm used to CBs. Uh, we apologise if we do, Colin and Carla, occasionally address you wrongly. Uh, please both accept you've got an extra name now. You're Colin Carla and you're Carla Colin. Colin, apologies for that. Um, OK. Fine. I, I think we're saying... Uh, Support? Yeah, I think we're saying support, aren't we? Um, no, no comments against. We we support this, Mark. Okay, uh, move on, please. Yep, are you ready for seven eighty then? The, yep. uh, that's the end of the lights. So variances. The only one that I'm aware of basically is Woodlands Drive. Um, the uh, salon has has been given a uh, hair salon has been given approval by uh, Brickland. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Um, Sorry, I've got an insect attacking on, me. Right. On uh, yep. 781, uh, this is something we've, we've uh, argued, which we've, 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 we've uh, intended that we would have this on the agenda each time around. Um, it oh, could no, be a no, no, Terry and Jen wants their hands up. Are, they, are these on 78? Is anyone wanting to talk about 780? Got a hand up from Councillor Hollis. Jen, Jen, which item? Oh, I'm sorry. Please? It looks like uh, Councillor Jeremy as well. I'm sorry about that. No, that's that's fine. Let's let's yes. get it done. Sorry, Chairman. Just before you move off the um, lates, um, yep. Mark, could you? I think you emailed us all about the Barnum Village planning application. Oh, yeah, I've I've actually put that under um, officers' update because it isn't actually a late application to us to Breckland. I'm we can consider it now if you if you wish. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. As, as long as it's on the agenda, I didn't want us to move off and maybe it'd be. Yeah. Different. Missed off the list, but that makes perfect sense. Yeah, that's that's thanks, Terry. It's going to come up in a, in a few minutes. Um, uh, was one other hand up to talk? Uh, uh, Jen, I think it was you. Are you on seven eighty? Yeah, yeah, seven eighty. The woodlands. Yeah, obviously, your turn. yeah, please, Jen. Yeah, I, I'm really disappointed with um, Breckland on this one. I really am. I think they need to do some homework on the areas that they're approving these kind of things on. But it's, it's just my whinge, Mr. Chairman. Sorry. I'm just so, wondering how we can incorporate your whinge into the into the report uh, <laughs> we sent to Brett. It's silly. It's, it's I think silly. we've got we've got, well, a very, we've got a we've got a very able officer, um, uh, Mark Webster. So I'm I'm happy to leave Mark to devise some way of conveying whinge to Brett. As 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 it as it has been approved, um, you know, there's, there's not really any sort of more scope to comment unless this committee wishes me uh, sort of a broader, I suppose, point of, of writing yeah. to Brett about. Uh, the, the, the you know the principles on which they're they're making these decisions. That's um, okay, Mark. I'll um, contact the planning um, chairman of planning. <laughs> the, 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 the 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 Breckland Field uh, and it's. I, I, I will contact the planning chairman. <laughs> I, I I just think Breckland Field like they're pushed into a corner really. The the, the national rules they have to they have mm. to find planning reasons for opposing to planning developments. And it's getting harder and harder to find planning reasons. And Breckland hate the thought of uh, of being threatened with court uh, uh, after after a, a a planning decision to turn something down. So they play safe on that. Understandably, I think it's public money that they are concerned about. So yeah, it's a real problem. I think we probably have to accept that the the the, the horse has bolted or the, the bird has flown. Um, but. but Nonetheless, I think we probably you probably get a lot of agreement with that, Jen. Um, I just think we're stuck. We're where we're where we are with planning. We do what we can. We advise uh, Breckland if 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 we don't give proper planning reasons for opposing things, they'll just say shucks. We we've got to. They will do so. They will say planning uh, takes is only the only thing that matters is to get genuine planning justifications for turning down applications. If, if there aren't any, it goes through. 
Um, so, I mean, you've had your whinge. We are, we probably agree with you, but we, we, we are where we are, I fear. So I'm hoping now we can move on to 781. Um, Hands up from Councillor Canham. Uh, Councillor Canham, are you wishing to talk about 781 or 780? Um, seven eight zero, the last, the one with <laughs> one with one. I thought I'd off it. Back, back we go. Yep. Yeah, well, yeah. I, you know, there's nothing we can do about it. But I think long long term, we've got to start thinking about if everybody starts a little business in their garage areas. Yeah. Um, we won't need to have a town centre. And I, I think that is, you know, long term, we've got to start looking at this because we could all run a little business from our garage. You know. Um. And Brooklyn should start thinking about these things because what we're actually doing, we're saying, oh, yeah, we want more people in the town centre in little shops, but no one's taking the shops because they're doing it from their own home. You know, it's ju just something I think we need to start thinking about for the future. Well, Brooklyn does anyway. That's it, really. And that's just a little whinge. <laughs> uh, 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 we, 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 lo we lost the plot slightly. The first time we agreed to one of these was, I forget whether it was Woodlands one or somewhere somewhere else but but there was an earlier one i think we we're on the third at least now fairly recently and we've we've uh we've we've kind of given way once you once you agree to one it's either harder to disagree with the second or the third um I, I personally i think your point is very well made uh it does seem rather short-sighted but equally uh you have to say that um uh as the chairman of um CBC, I'm, I'm in the business of giving people startups and encouraging people to start up. And that's what we're doing here. We're saying uh, you don't have to hire out a new premise. Uh, you can try out a little business. Maybe it's a part time business or brings in a bit extra. Very hard to say no to that unless the public are going to be inconvenienced by large numbers of cars parking or flocks of people coming in and peering. Um, I, 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 Am I speaking for everybody, or does that, do, do colleagues feel they want to say something else about this issue of of um, small businesses within within uh, residential areas? I I fully understand what you're saying, Mr. Chairman. It's the fact that the park is horrendous down here, and then we've got the one that followed this, the application that followed this. Yeah. Um. There's a good chance now that that will be approved and. You try and explain that to the neighbours, and this, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, I totally understand what you're saying. I, I, I think, I think, as regards the neighbours, Brenda, you you have to really put it back to them and say, you know, please complain directly to Breckland. Um, I would encourage neighbours to do that. Sometimes Breckland will occasionally, no, perhaps I should say occasionally, it is possible that Breckland will listen to uh, strong complaints from neighbours, and particularly, of course, if there's six or eight rather than just two or one. Um, it is an option that we we might get them to do that. It's, it's, the, the, it is really difficult, but, but uh, uh, that's the best way forward, I suspect, for neighbours who are unhappy. Um, at Breckland are the people who make the decision. I'm just take the opportunity of reminding all the public and listening, your hundreds and thousands of you, that uh, we are an advisory body. We are not making decisions. We wish we were. Uh, we should. We f we do feel that Thetford Town Council should control what happens in Thetford, but we don't. It's Breckland Council that controls that. We are trying to persuade Breckland that uh, we've got a point for them to listen to. That's as far as we can do, and we're pointing out whatever we know in the way of local knowledge. Uh, but we are just uh, advisory. We can't we can't make these decisions ourselves uh, or even ourselves. So um, having said that and having listened to these totally justified whinges, I'm going to suggest we probably ought to finally, for the last time, leave 780. And can we now move on, please, to 781? Uh, Mark Webster, please. Uh, yep. So this is item, any items to be referred to the Great Effect of Partnership. <laughs> Uh, this is the item that we put on just to give everyone the opportunity of making comments about wider issues, more general development issues, progress issues in uh, what we're doing to improve our town and indeed the, the greater Thetford area. Uh, are there any items that we think this time colleagues should be referred to the GTP, please? And I'll just say this while you're thinking of the answer to that question. Um, is there any comment to come back from the GTP? I guess uh, 
Terry, you'd be the most likely to comment on that, but I may I may be wrong about that. Are there any comments any comments from anyone coming with the authority of the ETP, please? Either way, are we talking to them or they have they got information for us? Uh, Rob, that, Mr. Chairman. Sorry, Brenda, can you start again? Yeah, I, I did put my hand up. There's a uh, hand up, yes. I was waiting for to see if Councillor Jeremy was coming in. Uh, <laughs> well, you, um, let, let, um, let's, let's take what Brenda says and then Terry can come in later if he wishes to. Well, Brenda, please. Te Terry was talking about uh, Alpha, I believe, about the booklet that he was making um, with Stuart. Is he taking that forward or is he going to wait and prepare it better? Terry, Terry, do you wish to comment on that? Yeah, sorry, I didn't quite hear Brenda, but I think what you're referring to, Brenda, is the Rivers report. Is that right? It is, yeah. Yeah, so um, there's actually a, a great effect for partnership meeting tomorrow. Um, and after the meeting, there'll be a uh, session with the board um, and the team behind the work that Wayne Hemingway is doing. So that really is the focus uh, tomorrow. And the Rivers report is on the April uh, agenda for the uh, for the board. Um, I'm just going to post into the chat. Um, Jack Weaver produces these regular updates. Um, and they are all now on the revamped GTP website um, and the latest update for January and February is on there and it's a you know it's a publicly accessible document um, and Jack lists all the people he's meeting with and the different projects it's a really worthwhile document to read and it really sort of captures everything that he is up to on behalf of the board might be useful if um, these come out before planning meetings that we perhaps, you know, uh, give people chance to read them before the meeting so that, you know, they can think about questions and find out what the board's up to. I mean, um, I'm not the town council rep on the board, but you know, I'm doing my best to answer any questions. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of information there. And um, I, I think uh, Jane sends the minutes round from the board meetings as well now. I think she's got sort of clearance to uh, circulate them, which also full of quite a lot of information. Uh, so there's lots going on actually, it's really encouraging and obviously uh, GTP have been involved in the planning application that we saw tonight in relation to um, m and Co. Um, and uh, obviously the, the you know, let's talk about Fetford stuff that's going on uh, as well, but that's all in, uh, um, encapsulated in Jack's report. Um, and uh, hopefully, I assume Jane and Mark will be there tomorrow, uh, so they'll be able to give an update on tomorrow's meeting at the next planning committee meeting. Thank you very much. Can I ask you, Terry, whether you think there's any further virtue in putting a link on the Town Council website to the GTP website? Is that something that might help at all, or do you think we've, we think we've got maximum coverage already? Yeah, I mean, I think all opportunities that we can show the different organisations working together, the better. So um, uh, I'm not sure if there's a link on the GTP website to the Town Council one and vice versa. But if there's not, I think there jolly well should be. I wonder whether Mark Webster, that's something we can check up on and encourage it if it's not already there. Uh, yeah, I can investigate. I know there's sort of um, work going on on the Town Council a new revamp of the town council website at the moment i believe so um yes but yes i certainly can yeah. to get that in if we can right thank you okay so um i think we've probably uh on the button with with regard to the two big issues the rivers report and the uh, uh the hemingway issue so uh i think we've perhaps covered 781 i'm going to suggest that we move on to 782 uh, which is pretty brief. It's it's to do with street names. I'm sure a number of councillors get suggestions occasionally. Uh, I've had one or two recently uh, from suggestions from one or two people about the choice of street names in uh, Thetford. What Mark has got on the screen now is the current um, uh, decisions and recommendations. Mm -hmm. Strong enough word to as to how street names should fit. 
so that ba what it basically says is these are the list of things that we don't want in the name in, in new street names. So, uh, so for example, number two, the second uh, uh, bullet point, not to be offensive. Um, so, uh, what I'm going to suggest to you, and it's not necessary for much discussion unless you want to, but <clears throat> it seems to me that um, given that the public do take an interest in new names or names for new streets. Uh, we should be aware of that uh, list. It's quite substantial in, in numbers. Uh, we should be perhaps compiling a bank of names that people have recommended in Thetford and that we can see the point of, could, could support, uh, and that um, we should have a policy of advising both Breckland and developers uh, in the future about our suggestions and proposals, uh, providing they are <coughs> excuse me, um, fitting in with those bullet points. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really the proposal of the point here. Uh, and of course, it means that councillors, you are encouraged, you and your ward, ward uh, members, you, your, your, uh, the people in your ward, you're encouraged to submit um, names to this um, proposal. We would, in fact, as a council, we would be looking at being a sort of conduit of suggestions to the developers and to Breckland, but we would also go through that list and apply uh, these um, uh, requirements so we're not wasting either Breckland's time or, or anyone else's. Um, that's really what I intended as a, on this subject. Uh, and I'm going to do that unless that is uh, unless uh, uh, there is disagreement or indeed if you've got better or, or further ideas. So they, just to summarise, we have a bank of names. Got two hands up. Yeah. Uh, thank you. The two yeah. hands up from councillors Wright and Hollis in that order. Uh, so in a moment, I'll let uh, Stuart speak and then Jen. Uh, so a bank of names and a policy of um, advising Breckland and developers. Uh, Stuart, your next, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, yeah, so very supportive of this idea of a building a bank. Um, presumably, we, we can just um, put those forward. If we could have a standing item on our agenda for planning, then if, if people get a good idea put forward to them, we can bring it forward. Yeah. And that's it. And then Mark can just log it on, on our bank of names. Um, you know, just to make the point, sometimes the most appropriate name is something that comes to mind when a development happens. Either somebody or something has happened in that locale that makes it very, you know, uh, appropriate to use uh, a name for that. So, you know, these banks are useful, but at the same time, one would hope that, you know, there may be a, a new idea coming forward because it's in, uh, there was an old yew tree in, in the area or there was something you know, happened, a foundry or, or whatever. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think, you know, we, it's good to have that things up with sleep. The larger developments, such as Kingsfleet, um, we've pretty much missed the boat there. I think the developers came in with the whole list and we had quite an email discussion on, on the, um, the the way that they had been chosen. And I think you know, in the main, they have been all linked to the Gilberston and Croxton parishes uh, and Lord Fisher. So, you know, there is um, a reason behind that. So I'm quite happy that, you know, those names were chosen. Uh, and it's difficult as the town expands to to uh, come up with different ideas. You know, we've got uh, Cloverfield, we're very advanced. We've had the the trees up on the the Barn Cross Estate. Um, so uh, for a family of big names, it's it's going to be difficult going forward. But I think a bank of smaller names um, to have up our sleeve is is a good idea. So I really support the idea. Thank you, uh, Jen. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, can, if I can remember rightly, when they were doing the um, Breckland were doing the where the cinema and that is, I thought we'd come up. We actually come up with um, a list of names that developers and that could use for the town. So there should be a list um, floating around somewhere um, from plan from planning when when um, we gave a list of different names for that area and other other areas in the uh, future so maybe if we got we could find that list that was done and then maybe at a, a planning meeting we can go over that and and see what's on there but i know we done one because i, I you know I remember us doing one when they were doing that 
Yeah. So, sorry to interrupt, Jenny. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. We have done it before. I think what we well, the mistake before was that we just produced it and then kind of let it lie. We didn't push it a bit a bit more than we perhaps should have done. Uh, yeah. If anyone does discover that list of names, that would be a starter for any bank we might establish. I just want to make one more comment, but I'm open to further further discussion. And the one more comment is, I think it's fair to say that despite the fact it doesn't appear it on that list, my feeling is that they would not wish to, um, uh, they've taken for granted that the name of a, a, a local person would, would be not of someone still alive or likely to be applicable to someone still alive. Uh, they kind of suggested that in the second of the second lot of bullet points below where it says, please be aware. If you look at the second bullet point, it implies that. Um, but uh, I think that's an additional additional limit on what's being suggested. Um, uh, I don't know whether, Mark Webster, we, you've got any thought of where we might possibly find that list that Jen uh, Hollis <laughs> referred to. Um, if we can't find it, uh, probably not any great harm done. We need to start it again, uh, as uh, Stuart suggested. Are there any other, um, any further comments on this item, please? Uh, we're establishing a bank and we are giving advice, but it's no more than sadly to both Breckland and any like, developer in future. I think we have to accept Stuart Wright's comment that uh, the, the, um, the 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 uh, development on on the north and west sorry north and east side of Setford which has got a peculiar name I don't like to use um to my prejudices uh that's probably been and gone uh, I, I think we have to accept that uh, any more comments please okay I, I'm going to take it that, that we will go ahead Mark Webster with the with the proposal to form a bank to advise the council and any developers and that we will um, uh, come back to the subject on a regular basis just to refresh it. Now, I think we come back to it, colleagues, when you've got something you want to say or perhaps a list of names or suggestion from a new member, a different member of the public. Uh, so we'll, we'll take that there. OK, um, if you're happy with that, can we move to 783, which is the bike racks issue? And this is something that Terry's referred to, and we're coming to it now, finally, Terry. I don't know whether, Mark, you'd like to start us off with this, and then perhaps I'll let Terry come in next. Yeah, so, the, well, there's a couple of things under the officer's update, the, the bike rack and the um, the quarry um, in, in Suffolk, but uh, with uh, traffic movements affecting that. But so uh, if, if the bike rack uh, first, uh, so, this is, is a, a picture you've probably seen, which is a proposal that came to us from Jack Fulham at Brackland. Uh, he's sort of putting in some load of bike racks in, in, in a bit, in, I'm not going to say in a hurry, but it has to be done urgently. Um, so this was the original proposal for uh, a place to put the bike racks uh, by the toilets there in Castle Park, uh, which is marked on that map. And uh, this is what they would basically look like. Um, so already happening in the uh, Market Square. Uh, so extra bike racks. But uh, if you have a look at that map there, the red zone on that map at the top of the screen is uh, the area of the scheduled ancient monument uh, for which you would have to apply for scheduled ancient monument consent if you wanted to do any ground disturbance and you would have to have and that can take weeks and weeks and you would have to have an archaeologist standing there watching it while it happened therefore if uh we were to go ahead with the original proposals it well it basically wouldn't happen that's not sort of uh, able to happen with the time scale of uh, of this funding for uh, the cycle rack scheme so uh, not necessarily a disaster because you basically have two options still uh, if you want to put it on our land um, in that sort of area you can go to the north of the path that runs parallel to castle street so you could go between this uh, footpath and uh, castle street itself or you could just go on the other side of there's the toilets there on the other side of the this path that heads down towards the ramparts the other side of the toilets there or just behind the toilets there so um, basically having as i said having had a 
sort of uh, conversations with uh, Jack Fulham uh, or emails about this. Um, he's basically sort of happy for you to, uh, as a council, to give some guidance on uh, whether you want this to happen and if so, where you'd like it to happen, as I said. But just, just bear in mind that uh, we, we strongly suggest you don't uh, go with the original suggestion of putting it uh, by um, where it's uh, marked in red on here because that, as I said, will basically stymie the whole project. So you're basically looking at having it either along here or sort of here or here. Uh, and that seems to be fine. I have checked with the archives. It is basically an all or nothing thing. You're either in the schedule monument mm -hmm. or not. And uh, there's no sort of buffer zone. So if you're inside the area, you, you know, as I said, you can't do it. And if you're outside, you can. So, um, yeah, sort of comments, uh, suggestions, uh, sort of welcome for where and, um, the spike rack. Uh, yeah, I think we're ready for comments. So, Stuart, if you'd like to start us off. Yeah, um, just looking at the images on the screen now, our preferred option, I think, would be to to the right of the existing toilets there. Um, visually, it wouldn't in, you know, encroach on the, on the park view. Um, somebody may say it's a bit hidden, so it might possibly be more antisocial behaviour, dam damage to the mics if it's there. But uh, I think those that are there's enough people walking around the park when the bikes are in situ they should be okay so where that bin is to the right of that i think would be my preferred location reason I'm saying that um you don't really want it to intrude so much on the view um where mark said nearer the road um and also long term of the other side of the toilets one would hope that we may consider putting a, a kiosk or something in there to to look at servicing the, the park with you know teas and coffees type of thing uh, and the last thing I want to do is put a big concrete pad down and then you have to dig it up again. <laughs> so <laughs> I think to, to the right of where that bin is would be my preferred location. Thank you very much. We've got a proposal. Um, any supporters for that proposal or any suggestion? Anyone want to suggest that we look at one of the other two possible nearby locations which which Mark Webster referred to? Uh, no, I agree with Stuart. You, you agree with Stuart. So we've we've got two two for the uh, as, as Stuart described it on the right of the, there. So effectively behind the the public toilet building, you can see in, on your screen. And uh, I think uh, I'm happy to accept that as a, as, as an agreement, unless you are. Yeah, Councillor Harvey agrees. Uh, yeah, Councillor Hodgkinson agrees. Uh, well, my dog as well. Yeah, agree. Yeah, that's my dog, I'm afraid. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm just agreeing. I'll uh, me right now. Okay. I will take it as a vote then, uh, as your your um, uh, support then, Dennis. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I the only thing I suppose it's worth mentioning is that I think in the moment sort of uh, contractors, grass cutters do access by that area, but it shouldn't be problematic for them to. I'll, I'll, I'll just check with the, you know Roger and, and, and Nick about how they get into the park when they need to with a vehicle. But um, there's plenty of other possibilities to do that, I think. And actually, it will probably be quite helpful to stop sort of unauthorised vehicle access if we did put the bike rack uh, across there. So, uh, uh, yeah, if that is that a decision, then, uh, Chair, we're, we're going to uh, to... Jack Fulham with that. OK, we're, 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 we're making a decision, colleagues. Uh, the, the location originally suggested by Stuart is the one we accept. Yep. Yeah, so just to clarify, it's basically sort of there where my cursor is at the moment. Yep. If you move on to 784 now, Mark, you've got the item. Okay. Yeah. Suffer. So, uh, yeah, this is the, the one um, that uh, was referred to earlier. So this hasn't actually come to us sort of directly. Um, we're not sort of statutory consultee because we're across the border. Um, Barnum, uh, the clerk of um, Barnum uh, Parish Council actually uh, sent this through to us. Um, they obviously have concerns about sort of traffic movements in the area. But basically, um, so they're going to uh, remove uh, sand and gravel from this area. This is Suffolk County Council. They're making a judgment on this as they are the, the relevant authority when it comes to minerals uh, and waste. Um, so uh, so this, this quarry would be here. Um, eventually to be restored to Haithland, um, but basically they will extract sand and gravel and then uh, sort of import inert uh, waste material to uh, eventually restore it. Um, so, um, yeah, so the, basically 
what they're suggesting is that there will be three to four loads per hour of HDMG movements, about 30 to 40 loads per day. So the route, uh, I'll, I'll show you in a second, but basically from this roundabout, lorries would come down here along this track um, through here, and that is the way they would enter the site. They would exit the site by turning right, coming to the crossroads here, Barnum, and then coming back up into Thetford there or heading south downwards. So we don't know at the moment what proportion of vehicles would be expected to go up here or down there. As I said, at the, mo at the moment, the proposal is that they, they come in from the A11, but then go out by the A134. Um, so, as I said, I, I'm, I'm not in a position to, I mean, we can all speculate, but I'm not in a position to say how many of the uh, 30 to, uh, sorry, what is it? Uh, yeah, 30 to 40 loads per day would actually be coming up through into Thetford. Um, so, um, yeah, so there you go. Uh, basically, there is a, um, a Zoom meeting to which I think uh, I've sent through the email from um, Barnum Parish. Uh, they are having a Zoom meeting to discuss their response to it. Um, and uh, councillors have been invited to attend that, um, if you wish. Thank you hands up for Councillor Jeremy Chair. Uh, um, I, I think we'll fire ahead, Terry, with your comments, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I, I was um, notified of this by um, Barnum Parish Council towards the end of last week. Um, this is very, very concerning. Um, there has been decades long issues with HGVs coming into Fetford, particularly on the Berry Road um, and then out uh, primarily down Brandon Road, but potentially, you know, going in other directions within the town itself. Um, and whilst the HGVs will come to the site off the dual carriageway empty, they will more than likely leave the site full um, of aggregate. You know, there will be very heavy trucks coming through full of um, items um, and causing a significant issue for residents along Berry Road, uh, let alone all the other sort of issues, the, you know, the amount of collapsed drains and uh, curb issues and stuff that Councillor Chris Harvey and I have had to deal with in that area from HGVs on the Berry Road. Um, so I'm very concerned. Um, I, I've, I've been looking into this a little bit because I would have thought it would have been more sensible for the lorries to come in off the dual carriageway and then to go straight back out that way um, because it would make sense to avoid residential areas as best you can and get to a dual carriageway as quickly as you can. Um, and I think there's a HGV restriction um, on that particular bit of Elverdon as you go out where that blue line is on the screen and to the left. So that is a concern. We are effectively being penalised because we don't have a HGV restriction on that part of Berry Road. So I think as a council, we need to be commenting on this planning application first and foremost um, and registering our concerns about the HGVs. Uh, and I think the other point as well, as well as the daily number of movements, the life expectancy of this project is five years. By the time they dig everything out and, and put it back to, to how it was, we're talking, you know, lots of days worth of HGV movements. That's a long while uh, to be, be to be putting up with all of this. Um, and I would ask separately that as a town council, we write to Norfolk County Council and say, you know, it's high time that we had a HGV restriction restriction put on that part of the A134 Berry Road. It's been an issue for decades. We've gradually been trying to reduce HGVs on that road. Um, and, you know, these are not welcome proposals for people that live in Fetford, particularly that area, but also on the Brandon Road um, and also just generally the Fetford Road Network. We know there's a lot of issues with the road network in Fetford, damage to the free nuns bridges from HGVs, congestion in other parts of the town. Um, I'm very worried about this application. So I think we need to act as a town council. Thank you very much uh, for that, Terry. I've I've got a couple of hands up. Can I just add a, a just a, a sort of personal comment on that? Uh, I deliberately walked along um, the would it be the how would you call it the west side of a, a, a Berry Road today, where the HGVs would come. 
um, uh, where the housing is uh, uh, and where the cars park on the other side of, of the road it is, it is a bad experience to be on that pavement when HTVs are passing you. It is totally un, un, uh, unpleasant. It, they are very close to the pavement. They are very close to the fronts of people's houses. Uh, we should, I think, be following. I'm sorry if I'm giving my prejudices away, but it seems to me we should be following what Terry has suggested. Having said that, um, I throw it up in the discussion. I've got a hands up from Dennis and what, what my screen calls one other. So apologies for that. Perhaps Dennis, right. Dennis next and then we'll hear from Chris Krim and as to who else. Dennis, yeah. are you with us, please? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm echoing mostly what Terry said, but I mean, the Berry Road is already a nightmare for, for women, well, for anybody who's pushing a... a, a a buggy along in there or anything you're taking your life and your child's life in your hands yep. trying to cross the road with this much extra traffic on it not only is it going to be dangerous to people it's also going to put a lot of pressure on the road itself and this traffic being a bit prejudiced is suffolk traffic and it's going to be tearing up norfolk roads there i mean i know we can't be <laughs> territorial as such but i mean it, it, it really is going to be problematic. That road is already so busy that 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 it's dangerous, and this is just going to increase the the danger. So thank you, thank you very much. We've got uh, uh, councillors Wright and Cannon in that order. Um, uh, Stuart, would you like to go next, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I think Jacko in both those um, speakers. Thoughts, you know, it's another state of debt being done too. Um, but not only does Norfolk County Council put all the East Harling lorries through us, um, Suffolk have done this to us for many years, as Terry pointed out. You know, when they put the HGV ban on the 1088, uh, everything was diverted onto the, the Berry Road. Um, we've mitigated it a little by having the one way system going through, but this is going to be, yeah, we'd fail in our duty if we didn't object to this. The, these lorries are going to come straight through. As we've pointed out the problems on the Prairie Road. The Brandon Road underpass is, is continually um, falling to pieces. Um, North County has to have to re repair that. Uh, the chase traffic lights are going to be chock a block. There's very little um, clearance there to get wagons through there. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we've got to object. I suspect, you know, as ever, these things are a done deal. The um, County Council have made their decision. And Suffolk never looked too lightly upon that, but, but um, I think we've got to make our point and say it's, it's really unfair. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I've got uh, Brenda, please. Brenda, are you, are you wishing to speak? You're muted at the moment. Yeah, so, sorry, I forgot to turn that bit off. Yeah, I can't understand why we're using the um, our path, the Berry Road, when there's Gould's Industrial Estate. Why aren't they coming that way round? You know, there's no need for them to come anywhere near Thetford if they come that, uh, uh, by path. If they want to get onto Berry, they can go down the Gould's Industrial Estate and not shake all the houses that are, are really old on the Berry Road. I've just realised that. Can I can I just say I've got Councillor Harvey who's I'm sorry who's had his hand up with a little hand and I can't see who that is because there's so many people as we're sharing the screen, so perhaps you could all use the meeting chat. But Councillor Harvey is next, and then Councillor Barreto. Um, Chris, can I just hold you for a minute, please? Yeah. So we get we get an answer from. Um, uh, the point that's been made, the last point that was made by by um, Brenda, yeah. um, uh, we 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 really do need to make sure that we are compiling here, um, uh, Mark Webster, a a list of of concerns to express initially, as Terry said to Norfolk County Council. Um, we're in a really difficult situation. I think there are several other comments we might be wanting to add uh to make it as forceful as possible um we are indeed in the hands unfortunately of suffolk county council but we have no we've no recompense to them we've no way of of influencing them uh it's a really tricky situation i'm going to invite um 
uh where have i got next is it is it chris and then carla is that right chris harvey i think you're yes. next yes thank you chair uh well most of what i was going to say has been covered now I'm a bit, i did have my hand up first but obviously wasn't seen uh terry's covered most of the stuff i we we are well aware of the fact that there are no hgb signs by the roundabout on the a11 to come into thetford lorries ignore those and i think they still will as opposed to being they're supposed to go down and go off the a11 slip road by Elverton there. The amount of damage caused to the Berry Road, yet again, the drain cover by the funeral parlour is broken. That's about four times in the last two years that's been smashed by lorries coming through. The number of increase in lorries will be horrendous. As you quite rightly said, it is dangerous walking along that road. Elderly folk on mobility scooters with pushchair things and families with pushchairs. It's lethal and we really must fight this in the strongest possible manner. Any increase at all should be fought against. Thank you. Carla, you're next, please. Thank you, Chair. I uh, just want to make a, quite a few points have been made already by the colleagues, um, but I would like to say that um, some time ago, we had a discussion about a study about the amount of uh, traffic in, in, in um, desperate roads or, or in this area. And it, by, by the time we done that study, we mentioned that, it was, it was 2018, but I'm, I'm sure how many of the colleagues might remember the dates, is that the traffic was well and above what, what was expected, what was tolerated for the for the state of the roads and what the town could cope with, basically. Now we find ourselves with, with projects and development in, in neighboring um, towns and areas. And, and, and to us, uh, unless we take a more proactive um, more proactive attitude towards this and start pushing for the head rather than being reactive is that we seem to always be collateral collateral damage to our road network as uh, we always suffer with with other other developments around us so as, as, as Stuart Wright mentioned uh, we had that with, with with other situations where we got the traffic and somebody else in other towns got the benefit of the development um, but it is causing major damage to our roads and it's, it is a big problem like then mm-hmm. said the um, road is, is very narrow, it's suffer, the road is suffering a lot, it's quite dangerous for people and just a whole lot of traffic coming through through town at the moment. We ought to limit that. My question is, wouldn't it be better maybe to take this approach as a town and actually be proactive and actually looking at the whole situation of road network as a town and put that to the county council um, as an as a, as a overview or a proposal? Uh, of some general measures for the different parts of town, particularly the most affected ones, we've been being reacted every time we face ourselves with a new development coming by and, and damaging the road. That's that's my question anyway, thank you. Thank you very much. And it's uh, Councillor Hodgkinson. Uh, Dave, your turn. Hi, uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Um, I'd just like to point out another potential problem in that um, it was mentioned that uh, traffic coming into the site may not be too much of a problem but it really does depend where that traffic's coming from um, and also a good deal of it once this is established will be bringing the inert waste in now for example if that inert waste was being picked up somewhere in the dis area then it would come down the dis road into setford turn right up her way um, go up Mumford Road, presumably, or he might even turn left and go down to the traffic lights and then on. But eventually it would get to the roundabout near Sainsbury's and then on into the route that's marked blue. Um, So that's another bit of traffic we might get. Now, if the traffic was coming from the Bury St Edmunds area, it's perfectly feasible that it might get to that junction. Realise, I assume that the HGV restriction is on the whole of that road to the left there. So they would then go through the Berry Road, through Thetford, back out again, and then up onto the round, up onto the um, Sainsbury's roundabout, and then in on the Blue Route. So the, all in all, there's a, a considerable amount of traffic that could potentially be impacting uh, large areas of Thetford. So I agree that we we need to to uh, protest strongly about this and uh, try and get it overturned. Okay. Um... I've, I've, I've just seen Dennis. Dennis, are you are you wanting to speak again, Dennis? No, chair. Sorry. No, not at all. I, I know the problem. Um, uh, I think most councils have spoken. Have I missed anyone out who would like to speak on this subject, please? 
Uh, just before you do, can I just well, what we're really doing, I guess, here is compiling a list of issues to raise, particularly with Norfolk County Council, which was, I think, the original suggestion of Terry. Uh, and I'll come back to you, Terry, in a moment for another comment, if I may. But are there any other comments, please, particularly from those who have not had a go yet? Uh, if if there aren't, then I really want Terry to ask you whether you feel that as a county councillor, uh, there's something more you can do, and also whether we should be encouraging the, your fellow county councillor, Councillor Roy Brame, who's not uh, not in attendance this evening, to uh, to try and work with uh, behind the scenes with um, Norfolk County Council because. Uh, that may be a, a, as or more effective than simply writing a, a list of, of complaints to them. Uh, any thoughts from you, Terry, on that would be welcome. We certainly want to have the list of complaints, and I think Mark, uh, sorry, I think I think Mark Webster and I will need to compile that. But uh, anything else, Terry, that you think we can do? Yeah. Um, first, is we need a, a sort of two-pronged approach. Um, one is this is a live planning application and we are within our rights as a council to write and formally object um, as a consultee or not a, as, a, as a body. Uh, we're not a statutory consultee, we're not even a sort of formal consultee, but we can write as a council and object um, and we can do that as individuals. Um, so I think that's the first thing and we can of course uh, use what methods we can, social media, what have you, the council, to encourage residents to also write in an object. So that's the, probably the first thing. Uh, it's a live planning application. Can I just interrupt you, Terry? Are you talking about writing to Suffolk County Council now? Yep. So the 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 link that Mark Webster circulated today. Um, uh, if you follow through with that link, there uh, I've done it today myself. Um, there is a formal section on the Suffolk County Council website for individuals, organisations to comment on the planning application. Uh, so that would be the first thing. Uh, I think the Norfolk County Council one is a secondary one, and I think our argument with them needs to be, um, in the interests of Norfolk residents, you need to be putting a HGV restriction on the A134 Berry Road in on the Norfolk side. Um, that's the, the single most important issue. It has been for many years. Um, they've thus far refused a HGV restriction on that part of Fetford, um, and we need to be making the argument. Second to that, I am, as a county councillor and a district councillor, uh, encouraging both Norfolk and Breckland to object to this application. Um, whether or not they will, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if they, they tend to get involved in these sort of matters. Um, but, you know, they are elected to serve residents of Fetford who are in Norfolk, who are in Breckland, who will be disadvantaged by this application. And I would hope they object to it uh, in the same way that I would hope the town council objects to it. And um, as for Roy, I mean, Roy and I both completely agree that there is a HGV issue in Fetford and we've worked together on uh, various signage improvements to um, address HGVs in Fetford. Uh, we, all, we all know where Roy lives. He's on one of the streets mentioned. He knows better than most, I think, that HGVs are an issue in Fetford. I haven't spoken to him yet, but I think he would be in agreement with us that this is not good for Fetford. Thank you very much. Can I just add uh, to your comments, Terry, that uh, it may, may be trivial that uh, uh, that Norfolk County Council are going to be responsible for repairing uh, the section of the A134 that is in Norfolk uh, to the benefit of the ratepayers of um, Suffolk, who will gain from the advantage of being able to use our road in order to, to take their um, uh, gravel away and, and, and think probably what... Um, um, was suggested by Dave earlier, possibly bring other items in. So um, I think Norfolk has actually got an interest in considering whether it's right to curb the use of this road in their county, which they are responsible for repairing uh, from overuse or by Suffolk, wanting, as it were, a cheap non-Suffolk route for their uh, money-making, money-spinning quarry. Um, so I think we shouldn't miss the possibility of persuading Norfolk it's in their own interest, never mind the interest of Thetford, to uh, to do this. Um, um, having having that said, that little rant, I, I must have one rant a meeting. Um, uh, I wonder whether there are further comments still from colleagues. Otherwise, I'm going to suggest that what we do is thanks for that, Terry, uh, and you're working with the, as it were, behind the scenes and with Roy so much the better. And Mark and I will compile um, uh, a letter to Norfolk. And I think you're saying also 
encouraging everyone, including uh, this body, uh, including Thetford Town Council, to um, to respond to the opportunity on the Suffolk item. So let's do that as well. Um, final chance for anyone to comment. Otherwise, uh, it's it's really a question of one Terry and two Mark and I taking it forward. So could could I just point out, and Mark might be able to help me here, but this is a, this is an item which is under um, the committee officers' update, and that's just really to receive an update. I'm not sure how much you can actually decide here tonight. I might I might be wrong. Um, I, I, I often tend to take the view when it suits me, Chris, that <laughs> because this is a, um, a committee of the full council, uh, we have a certain amount of leeway which might not apply to committees which are more restricted in their membership. Um, I, I would be reluctant to suggest that we have to say in advance everything we're going to decide. Um, uh, it's it's a bit tricky that one. I, I accept what you're saying. I can't imagine there'd be any complaint from councillors not present if we if we took action here, which is perhaps the main concern. Um, so I don't think anyone's been deprived of a comment. And because we're a committee of the full council, everyone every council is entitled to attend this meeting. So hopefully, uh, those colleagues who will have a strong interest in uh, in the issue might well be here anyway. Um, it's also, I think it's fair to say, very, very recent. Um, Terry's pointed out that the information from Suffolk may only have arrived yesterday, so too late to mm -hmm. any. Equally, if we ignore it for a month, it may well be too late. Suffolk will have gone ahead. So I, I really think we need to do whatever is acceptable within the terms of uh, our um, of <laughs> terms of reference uh, to push up with this. Thank you, Chair. You're on record now of the reason why you're doing it. Uh, we we really don't want to uh, be seen to be doing nothing because of a sort of technicality, if I may put it that unkind way. Um, are there further comments? I'm not seeing any. OK, I think that's where we're at then, colleagues. Uh, we're going to uh, um, we're not making decisions. We are simply writing letters. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah. How about that? Could I just say what um, uh, Councillor Hodgkinson said, which is quite clear, that we are able to deal with lates that are not on the agenda in, the, in their own right. So you could deal with this under lates, I suppose. <laughs> if that if that would help you, um, Chris, then I can invite the uh, minute taking machine to um, adjust the location of these comments. So I, I, I'll, yeah, I'll speak to you in the morning about that. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be available tomorrow, Chris, but I'll take your okay. point. Uh, um, I'll um, talk to Mark anyway. I'm happy Thanks. for you to. Uh, I'm happy for you to find a way forward if you can. We, what I'm concerned yeah. about is that we don't drop this issue uh, unhelpfully. Uh, if we do nothing, I think we are. The community will say, I "Don't understand that. You should. You should have got on with it." Um, having said that, I think we've reached, uh, uh, colleagues, we've reached item 785, which is the final item on the agenda. Are there any, uh, and we have had some suggestions in a way, uh, are, 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 are there any community engagement items that are not already covered? We have, we have talked about publicising this particular item and writing individually. Uh, we did talk about extending the uh, Town Council website in a particular area, so we may have covered those items. Are there any other items for, uh, on the heading of community engagement, please, colleagues? Um, Mark Webster, were you catching a fly then or were you having a hung up? Oh, no, <laughs> just signalling to someone else in the house, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, I, I think, Mark, we're probably saying that there's nothing to add to item 785. I'm not hearing anything or seeing anything. Um, and I'm therefore about to draw the meeting to a close if, if, there's, uh, if there's nothing there. OK, colleagues, I'd like to thank everybody for their support this evening. I'd like to thank those members of the public who are taking an interest. I'd like to thank several officers who've attended. Thanks for all you, you do. And um, I'd like to thank colleagues for a uh, helpful discussion and some tricky and difficult and sometimes important issues. So with that, I'm going to ask...